with you DC lesson number four exercise tutorial so how does this video operate step one the exercise question is posed the student then pauses the video and attempts the question step two nice and easy continue to play the video a hint is provided if a little bit of assistance is required again then pause the video and complete the exercise if you haven't already done so. Step three, continue to play the video. The answer is provided and I normally give you a works explanation of how we got to the answer. And then step four, continue the video to the next question, so on and so forth. So let's get underway. Question one, to move a trolley along a workshop floor over a distance of 100 metres, a force of 80 newtons was required. Determine the work done. So pause here. Here's the hint. Uh, work equals force multiplied by distance. That's the formula we're looking for. So all we had to do was substitute in the values to the formula and uh, work that out. And in this particular case, the information we were given was a distance of 100 metres. The force was 80 newtons. So the amount of work done was going to be 80 multiplied by 100. Gives you a nice simple 8,000 joules, or you could have expressed it as 8 kilojoules which probably would have been a more appropriate, easier number to turn it into kilojoules rather than leave it in plain joules. Question two, an electric iron has a resistance of 48 ohms. How much power is consumed if connected to a 240 volt supply? So an iron resistance of 48 ohms connected to 240 volts. Pause here. So here's your hint. Power equals V squared on R. And if you've uh, just completed uh, lesson for part E, we did a lot of talking about power and V squared divided by R relationship. So pause here and have a go. And of course, here is our answer now. So let's quickly explain the answer. Formula reasonably straightforward as long as we understood we're after power. So it, uh, how much power is consumed? So we're after power, that was the, the key to the question. 48 ohms, so we needed a formula that involved ohms and volts is going to be the quickest and easiest way. So we end up with 240 squared divided by 48. And if you punch that into the calculator, you will get 1200 watts or 1 1.2 kilowatts. Is probably the best way to express it. So it was again, understanding how to read the equation to determine it was power was the central thing we're after and how do we get to power if we're given volts and ohms therefore selecting the appropriate equation from the ohms law wheel question three calculate the resistance that is the resistance hot of a 32 volt 100 watt lamp so lamp is on so it's running hot 32 volts 100 watts calculate the resistance so pause here So here's the equation, power equals V squared divided by R, same equations we used last time, but you'll need to transpose it. And here's our answer. So if we transpose the equation, we end up with R 
is equal to v squared divided by p. So that's the equation we needed to get up to, and it was just a transposition. Same formula, just making r the subject. So we end up with 32 squared as the voltage, divided by the power, and we work out that our lamp is 10.24 ohms. So the secret here was again understanding which formula we needed and being able to transpose it to make, in this particular case, the resistance the subject of the formula. Question 4. Calculate the current drawn by a 230 volt 1300 watt toaster. So pause here. The hint is current equals power divided by voltage. So again, it's just from the Ohm's law wheel. Current equals power divided by voltage. So it was just a matter of picking up the values that we needed and putting them into the formula. So we needed to have current, that's what we're looking for. So it was a matter of simply putting the voltage into the formula. So here's our voltage, our power in to the formula. Simply doing the maths of 1300 divided by 230 gives us 5.5. 65 amps. Question 5. Your iPod, when connected to a 5 volt supply, draws a current of 65 milliamps. Calculate the amount of power consumed. So pause here. Our hint is power equals voltage times current. Pretty common, one of the most base Ohm's law formulas. Power equals the voltage times the current. And now for our answer. So we've got five volts and 65 milliamps and remember the 65 is 65 times 10 to the minus 3 to account for the milliamps so we have 5 volts that's again nice straightforward then our 65 times 10 to the minus 3 we multiply both of those together and you'll get 325 milliwatts. So the iPod takes 325 milliwatts. Question 6. A 1.8K ohm 10 watt resistor is connected to a DC supply. Determine the maximum value of the applied voltage and the maximum permissible current through the resistor. So two step process here. There's two things that we need to work out. So pause here while you have a go. Okay, time for a hint. You have two values. The rest can be calculated from these. It's just Ohm's law. So as long as you've got any two values, you can work out all the rest. So the two values we have, to resistor, we're told 1.8K and it's got 10 watts. They're the two values. We've got 10 watts and 1.8. It says 
what's the maximum voltage for the supply. And if you look at your Ohm's law wheel, you'll remember that the voltage is equal to the square root of power times resistance. So if we take our power of 10 watts, multiply it by 1800 or 1.8 K, and take the square root of all of that, we work out that it's 134 volts is how many volts is connected from the supply. Then in terms of current, it says what's the maximum permissible current? It's a matter of just going, okay, the formula for current that uses power and resistance again. I've got power and resistance, but I want it in terms of current. Current is equal to the square root of P divided by R this time. So the same two values, but this time P divided by R. So it's our power divided by our resistance. Take the square root of all of that and you end up with 74.5 milliamps. Our final question is to convert the following. So you've got to convert uh, 0.5 kilowatts to watts, 1000 kilowatts to megawatts, and 1500 watts to kilowatts. Our hint is to make sure you use engineering prefixes to get it into the right conversions. And here's our answer. So, just get my pen turned on. We've got 0.5 kilowatts. So if we want to move that into watts, we've got to move the decimal point three places to the right. So one, two, three. Put zeros in there and move our decimal point. We'll end up with 500. So we end up with 500 watts. Or 500 watts is 0.5 or half a kilowatt. Now we've got a thousand kilowatts or a thousand thousand watts. How can we get that into megawatts? Well, we're already at kilos, and we want to go to megas, so there's only a to the power of three difference. If you remember, kilowatts is uh, already times 10 to the three, and mega is times 10 to the six. So we only have a times 10 to the three difference between the powers. So I simply move the decimal point one, two, three places to the left, and I'm in megawatts, which in this particular case gives us one megawatt. Down to 1500 watts now on our third one, and we want it in kilowatts. Nice and easy. It's simply a matter of taking the 1500 and moving three places to the left. I'll just turn my pen back on. So I go one, two, three. That's where the decimal point ends up. And you're at 1.5 kilowatts. Well, that's the end of a lesson four tutorial. I hope you've learned a little bit from those seven questions and their worked explanations.